Where do you think you go, stay, and are? In the inner world, other dimensions, no? I'm not saying it's wrong to put it there, here and there, or as much as you want, but you still got to take at yourself out of something and put it in something else. The truth and reality of what's going on, what's happening, and what's going to happen. Are you willing? Are you ready? Well, you know, I like to talk to people that listen. I mean, most people do. But you have to have something important to tell them. Tell them everything's okay. Tell them all those things. People should get tired of it. You know, it's like keep enforcing in me that everything's okay and I'm going to be this or I'm going to be the best and I am the best. To who? Well, you're only going to be the best to yourself no matter what you do, what you become. You can take the most famous people, boxers, golfers. Look at the situations they put themselves in. Nothing spiritual. Money doesn't bring anything spiritual into reality. Now, if you want to find something, don't you think you would want it to bring it closer to spirit and truth? I doubt it, because nobody's looking, nobody cares, and nobody really wants it. You can go out there and listen to these people talk. Oh, you're, you're, you're going to get everything you desire. The secret, the secret was, it was the greatest lie. How many people became millionaires because of the secret? Four people died because of the secret. Ten people almost died because of the secret. You know, when you do things in life, you should know roughly what you're doing or be guided somehow to know what you're doing. Just to think you can do something because you want to do it doesn't make it happen. Like say somebody say, I'm going to become spiritual. Okay, what are you doing to make that happen? Or read books. Whose? Other people's books that talk about how to be spiritual or that you are spiritual. Do you believe them? Words are words are words are words. And they seem to get closer to nothingness than the truth. Think about in in the older days when we had, uh, what, a third, a tenth of the words we have now? even probably less than that. Uh, I'm not talking about further back, but they had different words that we don't even perceive right now. Because in Atlantis, we had 32 psychic abilities. And talking wasn't one of the big ones either. I mean, we didn't like to talk. People didn't have to talk. And the words, we didn't need words. Everything has a vibration. And if you see the vibration, you know what it is. Uh, in those time frames, stealing, lying, cursing, cheating didn't exist. You might not believe that or find it hard to believe. But uh, being able to cure yourself, being able to see and know everything people around you are saying and thinking, cuts down gibber for a word, useless talk. Paint, you don't deal with it long, you get rid of it. All the things that we have to deal with now, because we didn't learn right. Well, there's no right and wrong. Oh, well, you can believe whatever you want. Put that along next to Santa Claus and see what you get for Christmas. Uh, You can believe the lies which people love to do. And people will pay anything for it. I just found out I'm hardcore, because when you type the top spiritual people, you get five names almost on every site that pulls up the top spiritual people. They're all the same people. Well, I wrote a real long letter to one just yesterday and the day before. One of them is charging for a workshop $1,300. All right. And I look further down for, for, the, for the degree in what he teaches. It's like $6,000. You know, a degree in in religion, uh, hypnosis and all those kind of words, what does it get you in life? Nothing. Does it get you more money? Well, 
the word hypnosis, if you get your degree through the state, they kind of let them make money on it. So it becomes like a job and a legal job. I did hypnosis half of my life without any kind of degrees, teachers, or anything. So, I mean, yeah, I met Kreskin when I was 12 years old, started doing hypnosis when I was 14. Uh, started doing regression when I was 21. And it wasn't out there. It wasn't a real word. So, who, who tells you what you need to know? Not people walking the street. Not people you meet in the bar. And not people you meet in church. So, where are you going to get your information on life? Never mind death. You go to the radio, you go to the internet, you pull up people. The answers to death, well, do you want them or not? Do you want the lies? Do you want the fairy tales about going to heaven? And Do you want the, the truth or do you want the lies? If I asked you to send me $5 for the answer, what would you do? Well, I'm not going to spend $5 because it's a stupid answer or whatever. You don't already make the decision on that, which isn't good. I'm not saying it is good because it's not. So, when you make a decision in life of what job you're going to do, all right, now, how long do you want to live life? Do you come up with, I know when I was little, I had a short term of life. I didn't want to live long. But, oh, I want to live as long as I can. And it's being pushed on people. Live as long as you can. Why? Is the world getting better? If I lived another hundred years, would I see the most beautiful world? No, you will not. So, when you say, uh, let's, let's keep an eye on what we're doing. Okay. Who's watching you? Who do you feel watches what you do? You think God's saying, hey, look, he just did this, he just did that. You think God has to do that? And it would do it for everybody? Ego is in play full power. Saying you're better, you're the best, or you're this, you're so good. Are you? Are you good at teaching people to become spiritual or helping them understand what it means? I haven't met anybody out there that's capable. There's people out there that can make you feel good. Again, we'll go back to the word. Feeling good has nothing to do with spiritual. You go to a comedian and laugh your head off for an hour. Is that spiritual? Oh, it uplifted my body. Yeah, taking your attention off of what you should be thinking about uh, is an answer for a while. But when you come back to the problem, the problem's still there, isn't it? The laughing didn't take it away. It doesn't. When you're giving, when you're having a child, your wife or you're pregnant, and you're like close to nine months, and you're getting ready to give birth. Do you think you care, you care about anybody else's program at that moment? No, you're worried about you and what's going on inside you, which is where attention should be. But see, the only thing that's keeping you focused on you is something inside you that's coming out. Now, would you stay focused on it if it had to live inside you? If we didn't give birth and we didn't do things and we had organisms inside us that we could talk to and work with, I mean, it would be different. But when we get abstract, we lose where we're going. The idea is to focus on focusing on inside yourself, not outside yourself. That's where you're going to find truth. So, now, truth about life is important. Why are you really here? Well, are you worried about death? Most people are. I had a voice that used to start shaking if I mentioned the word in front of him. Actually start shaking. My plumbing boss, when I was a plumber, I was younger. But he freaked out. So, what do, you, what do you think? What do you feel? What do you know? What do you care about life? And just so you know, most people that say they love life, Sure, they might, or they think they do, or they totally believe they do. But what do they think about death, the people that are so ingrained with life? Not to die. What's the most important thing pertaining to death to somebody that loves life? 
I'll tell you. The only thing that matters would be having money to pay for the funeral funeral when the person dies. But outside of that, death isn't an important word. Death isn't the uh, only thing that's going on in their reality. And it's not like what they really need to hear. All right? And they don't care. They don't want to hear that word. But it's much more important than the word life. Oh, no, i got to serve out a good life so I go to heaven. And who told people that? I mean, when people blame Jesus for everything, they're also denying who they are as a person. When they blame somebody else like Buddha or anybody else, uh, it's an excuse and it's a cop-out. Do you know a person that you talk and think about? If you're thinking about Jesus, you're thinking about Moses or whoever, do you know them? Do you know when a person writes a story, how much of it is real? You take a movie that was made from a book, how much is exactly the same? 70% maybe? What happened to that other 30%? Where did it go? The biggest example I can give you, I don't know if you're a movie fan or not, well, for me, it was uh, the day the earth stood still. I was little. I loved robots. That was the best movie I ever saw when I was little. But when they re- recreated the new version of that, which was put out with Keanu Reeve in it, a couple years ago, was pitiful if you related to the first one and the story that the first one was trying to tell. Because the newer version is telling a completely different story. I mean, trying to use some words and things to make it sound like it, they're trying to teach and say the same thing, but they're not. We are very active with our eyesight and hearing. We hear what we see. Uh, if I did a magic trick in front of you and you said, wow, you believe it. And what I was saying about children, children don't get sucked in as much as adults do. I mean, when they get sucked in, it's because of love. And I remember in school when they showed us the horrible movie of children being abducted and things like that. Uh, children are, are, are loving beings. They're ready to experience love, understand love, at least they're trying already. I mean, so if somebody comes along and offers some candy, they're being nice to me. They don't, they don't look at darkness. I mean, I'm not, and it shouldn't be there. I mean, that's a sad part of the whole thing. Uh, imagine you're... I did it a couple of times. I was down at Seaside, had a bunch of dolls, and I won them, and I, somebody was walking along with a girl, I would give the little, the little child a, a stuffed animal, whatever it was, right? And the, the happiness and stuff. But, you know, I didn't do it for something in return. And I wasn't doing it in any kind of state of weirdness or anything like that. So those kind of things are disappearing. I mean, I was at the shop, right? And I was going to buy something. And the lady says, oh, I'll pay for it. And she just paid for whatever I had on the counter. I don't know why. I hope I didn't look like a, a bomb or something where she said, oh, I feel sorry for him. But, you know, an act of kindness is incredible when you get it when you're not expecting it. But the people that give that are people that are much more aware of what the word spiritual is and how to become that. So living life is a game. People call it the matrix. Okay, you're playing a game and you're stuck in the matrix. I would rather look at it at a board game because you're going to go around a couple times and then the game's going to end. Did you win? Maybe not. Maybe you did. Did you win anything really? No. So how do you win in life? Because no matter how you win or what you think you win or how good you are, you're going to die. That dying means what you perceive to be good is no longer because you're not going to have anything. So is death as important as life? I'd say it's the opposite. It's much more important. Life means you keep staying on planet Earth. I mean, life in a body. All right? And you're going to be doing the same stuff over and over and over and over and over. And you think you're going to learn from it?